Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do a whole new entry here. This one yet again based on one of your newer suggestions. This one also has to do with yet another item, another monster found within the Native American mythology. You know that I've chronicled various cryptids and monsters throughout my series here within that mythology, so always great to be able to add yet another one here. And this one also has to do with yet another entry where there's specific locations that you can go to to this very day. So who knows, those of you listening out there to this video, when I mention those locations later on, you may actually be close by to this particular monster. Monster. But not much really much info associated with this creature to this very day, but still some of it I'll highlight here has been going on apparently for a long long time and it has to do with this you're looking at it now it has a very unique sounding name several names actually but for the most part it's known as the Goo Goo. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating but brief info associated with this monster. So what is this Goo Goo? Well again, it's a monster that's found within Native American mythology in many of their stories apparently that have been chronicled through who knows how many years. It actually goes by again several different names. Goo Goo is the most common name, but another one, another portion of it is known as the Koo Goo. I believe that's how it's stated, even though it's spelled differently. And yet in another way, it's known as the Mi'kmaq. And those that particular name, I'll highlight more in a minute as to why that stands out and then why it's called there, uh, that, uh, that particular name. Uh, apparently, these names all have to do with where this monster is located in terms of the tribe. So various tribes reported on this creature, Native American tribes, and each one essentially created a different name for it. And then as far as its physical characteristics, it has to do with this. It's a monster that's apparently very, very large. In fact, if you were to take it, at least within the time that apparently went in within its heyday, if you were to take it with your average large ship, you know, those large ships that traveled throughout multiple parts of the seas, then you're looking at something that was apparently as large as the ship's mast. So those giant uh, sails that cover the top part of the ship that lead the ship throughout the seas as the winds direct it, that's essentially how large it was. And in fact, it was so much larger in other cases that the name, again, the Mi'kmaq is actually a variation of the word earthquake from one of the tribes that, that reported on it. So apparently this creature was so large that its footsteps would shake its surrounding earth. So that's why they called it, in their terms, the earthquake, which in uh, the dialect apparently made it seem as it was called the Mi'kmaq. And then also, as far as its physical characteristics, is this. It's female. It's been predominantly cited as being female. However, we decipher as humans, like the female characteristics in terms of the female body, that's essentially how it looks. It was very, very feminine as a monster. So in most of those cases and people being reporting on it, that were reporting on it, they were stating that, yes, it was feminine. And then I'll highlight one other thing later on as far as a mischaracterization, as far as its characteristics, like its physical characteristics. But I'll save that for later on, too. Now, as far as what this creature does, it's not a good monster to come across. This was definitely... Uh, harmful to humans, so much so that it caused many, many deaths. This Goo Goo apparently loved being able to hunt for people, especially those Native Americans, those that were out there by the sea. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want very specific spots, well, here they are. You have to go to a place that's called the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And when you go there, you'll be able to apparently see this creature. Apparently, this Gulf of St. Lawrence is part of the North American Great Lakes, a uh, large, gigantic body of water there. But somewhere in that location, there's an area called Shaolair Bay. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Shaolair Bay. And then that's where this creature is at. So anyone that was traveling way back when in their canoes or maybe in their boats, something along those lines, again, you know, talking about those boats that have those giant masts, well, this creature would wade in the water as following them. It would tip it over. It would cause it to crash. Whatever it was doing, it was on the hunt. And then once these pure humans essentially were there in the sea, they were easy pickings. They were able to be taken by this goo goo and then they were pretty much eaten thereafter. So good was this goo goo at this hunt that it had what it cons what was 
um, people considered some kind of pouch. This was a pouch that was very, very large, almost human made. Like in other words, like the ways you and I would see people make their own pouches. That's essentially what this goo goo did. And it carried it around and it stuffed the humans within it. And then it would take it to who knows where, but uh, but that's where it was uh, then going to eat them afterward. So definitely, again, not a good thing to come across with this creature. Luckily, though, there is one sign, if you call it that, that would announce its presence. Apparently, if you heard some kind of whistling sound, whatever that sounded like, it was some very strong sound out there in the middle of nowhere in the sea, then apparently that's when you had the goo goo, this monster, coming across your location. Or even if you go to certain Certain areas uh, there by 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 on the beach or maybe even over by the land. If you heard that strong whistling sound, then yet again you had a good chance of coming across this particular uh, monster there. But I also wanted to mention that too. It's so large that whenever it lives in the in, in the land, it would just eat, stay somewhere, I guess, and it would stay almost like in a hibernation state, so much so that people would mistake it for a mountain. I don't know exactly how that would work unless, let's say, part of its physical characteristics made it look like it was part of the terrain that was surrounding it, but that's essentially how it goes. Apparently, this thing, whatever it was, um, it had this 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 area that it would live by and when it did so it would just curl up and then just lay there and then that was it and then it was too late in some cases for some poor humans because when they came across that location and then also the goo goo saw them do so it would lay in wait and then lo and behold it would grab them and then it would uh, eat them thereafter so this was something that again was very cunning when it came to just not just hunting and the land but also i'm sorry in the sea but also hunting in the land too uh only other thing to mention about this goo goo is apparently the mischaracterization of it. I don't know why, but when I was coming across some info to share here in this video, a lot of it was tied to the notion of Bigfoot. Now, I don't know exactly how this could be because um, unless you, as anyone else out there wants to point it out, unless you know of any Bigfoot that is actually the size of a ship itself, I don't recall anything being that large in the world of the Bigfoot, like anything involving, um, let's say, larger than an average human. Because at least based on past descriptions of Bigfoot, they're usually human size, maybe even a little bit larger, but nothing near like, let's say, the size of a large ship that can cross several seas, um, because that ship itself has to be very large in order to weather all the circumstances, all the environments surrounding it. So here you have something like this. If there truly was a Bigfoot that was this large, maybe it hasn't been discovered before, but that's apparently what's being tied to various articles when I was reading the information about the Goo Goo. If someone has more info on that, like why the Goo Goo is being tied to Bigfoot itself, then that would be something that, that please, if you can share it in the comments, that'd be something that great to share um, as far as expanding upon that idea. But is it a mass characterization? I don't know. It's too difficult to tell because there's such a discrepancy between the two monsters, between the two cryptids, and yet here they are being talked about from the same thing. Who knows? Maybe there was something as far as the Native Americans that, that had something that was tying them closer together, but I wasn't able to find any information on that too. But that's pretty much it. If anyone has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. Anybody by that area too, with regards to the Shaler Bay. This is again somewhere up north. They're in the Quebec area by Canada, by the Gulf of St. Lawrence. If anyone has any um, um, circumstances that I was mentioning earlier where you're traveling by that location and you heard that whistle, then that'd be really great to hear. I mean, I'm bad on your end because apparently then you were close by to a goo goo, but at least you'll be able to tell us what that was like um, going try going by the area and letting us know could truly something that big in terms of a ship-sized monster be existing not just in the bay not just in the sea but also in the land and not be discovered that would be something interesting to share too all right everyone thanks again as always take care bye